About 37 million people worldwide live with HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus. It does not discriminate by gender or sexuality. This World AIDS Day, IFL Science asked the experts about the current landscape of treatment and prevention. People living with HIV who are on effective treatment can live long and healthy lives and cannot transmit the virus themselves. This requires taking drugs daily, and while they stop the virus from harming the immune system, they aren't a cure. There are also drugs taken before exposure that can stop the virus from infecting people in the first place, but they also require daily doses, so these are not a lifelong vaccine. The search for a vaccine and a cure continues. Many approaches are currently being investigated and developed. Some are preventative to be used by people at risk of getting the disease, and some are aimed at ridding the virus hiding inside the cells. Unfortunately, HIV is extremely adaptable. It can change components and become unrecognizable. Due to this, many efforts to produce a vaccine have been stopped in their tracks. However, with new scientific discoveries, research is more diverse and robust than ever before, which is increasing the chances of success in achieving effective vaccines and methods of prevention to stop the spread of HIV infection and AIDS. Like many viruses, HIV mutates very rapidly, so it makes it difficult to design drugs against it. Um, and the best way to approach that is to have multiple drug targets and come in with several drugs at once. And in fact, our drugs that we have available are fantastic. They're one of the major success stories of modern medicine. But the downside is that you have to take those drugs for the rest of your life. Um, as soon as people stop taking the drugs, the virus just comes back. HIV is, unfortunately, a terribly clever virus. By attacking and hijacking T cells, one of the important components of the immune system, it disables a crucial line of defense in the human body. It uses the proteins found in the T cells to reproduce, systematically destroying our defenses and spreading through the host. So the normal way that it makes more copies of itself in a cell is by sticking its own DNA into the host DNA. So if it infects a person, the HIV DNA becomes part of, of that person's cellular DNA. And it cannot be cut out again. So there's no natural way of removing it. And that makes it very difficult to cure. So the approach that we're taking is to try and understand more about this replication. So how the virus makes more copies of itself really at the, the cellular level. So what happens in an individual cell and the interactions that the virus makes with the, the human uh, proteins. So we're trying to work out what proteins the virus needs and uh, also study natural host defenses. So some of these host defenses are called restriction factors um, and these are sort of like another branch of the immune system. Uh, and the way they work is um, by inhibiting the virus, so stopping the virus from being able to grow inside those cells. And we're trying to work out exactly how that happens um, and how we could maybe interfere with that so that we can increase the, the natural defences um, and also stop it getting the things that it needs to make more copies of itself. Thanks to the latest treatments, people living with HIV can expect the same quality of life as people who don't have the virus. The undetectable equals untransmittable or U equals U message has been taken on board by charities, healthcare organizations, and by the CDC in the United States. The increase in use of PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis, and other approaches have helped significantly in reducing the spreading of the virus. Uh, PrEP is a drug you take before and after sex, which stops you from getting HIV. I also, um, I basically raise awareness of it, as well as talk about my own PrEP use and try to motivate others to get onto it. PrEP is important because um, without it being available in this country, with people buying it alone, it managed to reduce HIV diagnosis by 40%. There is currently optimism for the production of an effective vaccine against HIV in the very near future. And thanks to scientific advancements, there are a range of HIV prevention methods available. So while supporting research is important, there is a lot more we can do, such as fighting stigma and stopping the spread of disinformation. HIV affects many marginalized groups due to societal barriers. Stigma, poverty, education, unequal access to healthcare, racism, homophobia, and transphobia are the main reasons why individuals struggle to get the help they need. One of the biggest parts of stigma is around um, the treatment. Because of how bad the 
AIDS epidemic was, it's very difficult for people to unlearn, I guess, behaviors and attitudes towards HIV and AIDS. The first thing we can do is try to learn. So we can look into what is available or what is different within HIV, uh, I guess, HIV medicine. Um, we can also allow each other to have open and honest conversations about the type of sex that we're having um, because actually people not people not be feeling comfortable about the, talking to their friends about what they're doing is actually creating more stigma and creating more HIV. I think um, World AIDS Day is extremely important um, to commemorate uh, the lives that were lost during the AIDS epidemic and also to kind of reduce stigma. But I think that um, we shouldn't be dependent on the one day of the year. I think throughout the year, we should do stuff around HIV and around sexual health. While scientists are working towards more effective treatments and a vaccination for the disease, society itself can play its own important role. Not all of us can fight HIV in a medical capacity, but fighting ignorance is something all of us can and should do.